All right, hello everyone. Welcome back. This is season two, episode three of Dead Air Radio. I'm your host Steve Fletch, and I'm my co-host Mitch Hartman. Mitch, how's it going? I'm here. You are here. Great, man. And then uh, we have a guest, which is our reoccurring theme now, uh, Dave Wait. Dave, how are you doing? I'm doing good. It's a nice day. It's sunny today, so no complaints. It's been raining off and on for weeks. And that's normally how it is over by you. So you're from, I want to say right now, it's outside of Seattle? Yeah, I'm, I'm about an hour south. So um, I'm in I'm in Tacoma, which is like a, a growing, it's a growing small city that I feel like a lot of people from Seattle are moving to just because it's more affordable and um, it's just less hectic. So you could, it's just a lo- slower pace of life than up north. But yeah, I, I'm about half an hour south of the shop and an hour south of Seattle. Right. And then, so you work at 35th Ave, right? Yeah. Yeah. For This is my 21st year. Amazing. And that's... Uh, that's so cool. And Mitch, did you have a question about 35th Ave? I believe you asked me the other day. Oh, shit. You're putting me on the spot. I don't know what you're talking <laughs> about. It was a... Uh, well, Mitch asked me, what's the difference between 35th Ave and 35th North? I believe you asked me that anyway. Oh, I did, I, but I wasn't sure if that's where we were going. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I get that question a lot. It's a, it's long and convoluted, but the simplest way I can put it is um, Kyle, who started 35th Ave, um, he started it in his garage in 77. And then Tony, who started 35th North, I believe in 2000, um, he teamed up with a guy that used to work at our shop um, before my time to start 35th North and then kind of worked out a deal with Kyle to use the name. So it's essentially two separate businesses, just kind of like um, a handshake agreement to use the name. Gotcha. I was, yeah, I was wondering how interconnected it was or what the deal was. That's cool. You know, we, we hoped it, I think, I think the hope was that it was going to be more stuff together, but it just didn't really work out. We have two different aesthetics and kind of, um, they have their own logos and things like that. And occasionally it does work out where we can do an event together and we just use one logo that kind of crosses over for both shops. But um, for all intents and purposes, yeah, it's probably creates more confusion than it, uh, than it solves. So we've cleared that one up, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I'm blowing it. No, no, not nope. at all. Not at all. I think it's, it was a valid question. I guess we'll get into like the basic stuff right now. So um, I guess like what got you into skating, Dave? Man, I was thinking about that today. Um, the very, I guess, the very first skateboards I had were kind of plastic, like banana boards. But that was probably in the early '80s. Um, my dad, he was like a swap meet kind of guy, and so on the weekends we would go to the swap meets. And I had a neighbor friend that had one, and so I kind of wanted to get a board. And that was just the very first skateboard I had, and it was as simple as just buying buying it for a dollar or two and you just go and ride some you know hills in the neighborhood um and then it just got it got to be a little more where i started every time we go i'd find one so i had this like little arsenal of like banana boards and i would kind of like arm the neighborhood with them and so we would all go and ride the hills with them but that was like you know the, there was so much more advanced skating happening at that point at like 83 84 85 you know wooden boards and and pools and all that but i was oblivious to it we were, it was just like a toy and then I think my neighbor friend, he got a fiberglass board, which was a step above the plastic one. And this is all within probably a year range. You know, maybe I was like seven or eight years old. And then it was a toy. You you just kind of forget about it, put it down, play video games, whatever. And then the neighborhood kids got two completes. And that was like a Paul Peralta sword and skull. And then his brother got a Jeff Phillips. And that was like the first pro boards I ever saw. I was just like, whoa, like look at these graphics. It was the Jeff Phillips with the cracked uh, cement kind of green underneath. And it's a Jeff Phillips Sims and there's a black sword and skull board. And I, I feel like that was kind of the turning point where I was like, what, what is this? You know, what is this subculture or what, you know, wh- I, I'm sure back then I was just like, Oh, look at this cool picture on this board. I want one, you know? And so I, I, I wasn't, a, I wasn't allotted, a, a, my, my family did not have much money. So I got the Nash thriller, which I've never been able to find a picture of it online. But it had a, a rising sun on the bottom, and it said Thriller and spray grip tape on top. And that was like my my first board from a store. And then uh, I rolled that for a while. But then I inherited a board from a neighborhood kid, which was a Caballero uh, 4, which was the Street Bats cab. 
And that's okay. kind of like where, that's where I first really, I feel like really learned to Ollie, kind of started getting into skating, met up with other neighborhood kids that skated. So. And was this around gleaming the cube time and, or was this more back to the future? Um, it was probably back to the future days. Cause I was about 86, 87. Um, we did go to see uh, Gleaming the Cube in the theater. Oh, and no way. Saw, yeah, and Thrashing. Saw both mo- both movies in the theater. Which one you like better? And so, Thrashing. Yeah. Mitch, you've seen both? I'm a, da- yeah, I'm a dagger, seen- or, or I'm Hesh, uh, as Steve would say. <laughs> dagger. <laughs> did you have a dashboard? Did I have one? Yeah. No, I had like a little blue banana board, and uh, I never had a Nash. And like oh, I had a banana, yeah. like you said, it was one of those little plastic ones I got for Christmas. And I put, I remember, I put socks on my knees, like tied socks, like knee pads. And I, <laughs> the thing didn't even roll. I like tried to roll around and you know put it away. And then I remember kids in my school skated, and that's when I was like, oh, this is so cool. And I wanted a board, and my parents were like, you can't have a skateboard, but my dad would buy me shirts, and uh, I was a poser. So that happened. I, I, I was a poser too. I remember getting a, um, I remember dr- getting my parents. I, I just remembered this story as I'm talking to you guys. I remember I, I wanted to be a skater for Halloween. And so I had my mom took me to, uh, it was called above the belt at the time, but it turned into what's called zoomies. Uh, so, but, but it was called above the belt. And so I, I got a bones hand plant skeleton shirt and, uh, the bol- the bones, uh, sweatpants. So nice. I w- nice. Yeah, I was a man. It was the second episode in a row that those came up. Every guest has to have those. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I did. I did I really. I didn't really. S- I, well, you know, I was, you guys talk a lot about that era you started at, you know, and I, I, I know you're being facetious though with saying you really missed out on Bones' uh, sweatpants, by the way. But uh, <laughs> no, that era, I know, like I, 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 Steve is like started a little after I did. But that couple of years, it seems to be a pretty monumental gap in skateboarding. Like if you oh, started sure. in like 86, 87, there's a big difference between starting in 88, 89. Oh, I was just, uh, I was working on a top 10 80s parts edit. And yeah, it's like you got 89 is rubbish heap, which is like, I don't want to say modern street skating, but it's very equal to it. And when you go back to like even 87, you get like the bones. What is it? Uh, Future primitive the video show. I don't know. It's so different. It's those those two to three years. There was so much evolution in skating, so much progression. And even if you go from that, then you go to questionable, and it's like, what the hell happened here? Um, but yeah, huge difference. It it's pretty wild too to have been like buying magazines the whole time and just realizing that I witnessed the whole evolution of skateboarding, like from. From that era, of like we've got cut off sweatpant legs on our head as like a head gasket thing and yeah. like berets and like funny stuff like that. And then a year later, you know, our pants started getting bigger and started getting a little wider. You did away with Vision Street where then we all wanted world industry stuff. And then, you know, it just was a, it's an interesting every, like every six months skating evolved and the list of skaters changed that you were paying attention to. Totally. And so. I always think like, Starting when we started around there, Dave, like you started before me, but I feel like we've seen all the good eras of skating. Like, luckily, no matter what, we've seen everything cool. And because those eras are timeless, I just feel like very, uh, very lucky to have been skating and seen this stuff firsthand and you've seen all these changes. So it's kind of even like, like, you know, kids now, they don't, you know, they're like, oh, it's like, I'm like the 90s. And it's like, dude, you're not like the 90s. This is like your interpretation of the 90s, which is cool. But you're not like the 90s, you know, just seeing all that stuff and having access to it. And I don't know, I'm just very thankful for that. If that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I mean, no, I am too, for sure. Just just because I am like a, a pretty sentimental person. So it's, uh, I, I look back through magazines frequently and kind of revisit videos and stuff. So it's like, I, I definitely try to live current and in the now, but it's fun to like, uh, reflect back, especially having, and I'm still skating uh, a lot. So it's, it's always, my skating hasn't changed that tremendously. I wouldn't, I, I feel like I'm, I'm probably still stuck in that kind of like early nineties, uh, stage, but it's still fun to me. And that's, that's, what's important. And it's still cool. I mean, you know, a lot of that stuff too came back. You know, 
curbs are a thing. Yeah, look how I was gonna say, look how corny it would have been if you were like a curb guy to most people in like two thousand five. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and, and you know, this is pretty cool. irrelevant relevant to my story. Yeah, to my story too, you know, it's like um those are the things I loved and skating was always hard for me. I was never like, I had to really try. There was no like easy pass. I definitely did not have the athletic ability to adapt and learn tricks easily. It was a struggle. So every trick I learned, it was like kind of obsessive, like OCD over like, I'm going to land this, I'm going to figure it out. And then wanting to do it every day because I didn't want to lose it because I could, if in the winter time when you couldn't skate all the time, it would just be like, Oh, there goes very heel flips. I guess that trick's gone. My name's Aaron Cairo. I'm a sponsored skateboarder from the San Francisco Bay Area. And today, I'm gonna teach you how to do a varial heel flip. I know that one all too well. Not the varial heel flips, but in general. Like, I was always, it was because I was so consumed with it. That's when I learned anything. Like, I didn't have, I guess you get a trick or two that'll come to you, but it was never like a natural thing. I was always the worst of the group until I guess I cared more than everybody else, you know? And then, uh, but I know what you're saying. Like it's work. And uh, what about you, yeah. Mitch? You pick, you were like a prodigy. No, I was never great. But I think that's like that building block of like, that's kind of what kept us with it because we not to like, uh, it sounds stupid, but to like, we never had the bar being that high. So like we were content with, you know, just like, oh, I learned a new trick after not learning a trick for two years or whatever. Where like some of our friends that were like the prodigies or the super good people, like once shit got too hard for them or once that like, you know, they stopped progressing as fast as they were before, then they kind of lost interest. Where like, it, you know, it's like, oh, I can go out and go do no slides and be content with that and have fun with it. Must be nice. You know. and, and, you know, that was the evolution, too, of the curb skating for me was, um, I think, I, you know, like, to try and s sum up, like, you know, working on a shop video for three years, skating with people that were way advanced above my skill level, it, it pushes you. But at a certain point, you know, I, I would skate this little ledge I had in my kind of a cul-de-sac at my house, and I'd be like, I'm never going to switch backside 5.0. I'm never going to. I'm never going to do like a hard ledge trick. And I just kind of reached this burnout point. And then that was probably around 2010. And then I would see the, you know, in our zone, uh, welcome got to be super popular and mm -hmm. I would watch these kids skating and I'm just like, man, they're, they're just having so much more fun than me. Like that looks like there's kind of rules, I guess. And as we all know, like, don't do this, don't do that. Um, you know, but I was just like, man, like, I, I just want to have a good time. And like, I, I would skate this curb and I felt like I learned a trick almost every day for like a couple months straight. And I was just like, damn, I'm progressing, kind of progressing again. Like this feels good. And I think that's what kind of sparked it. And then, uh, and then it was kind of nice. It was like, you do whatever you want. No one would judge me. It's just skating was, is pretty open up here. So. Which is. And what, yeah. When that switch clicks where you're like, no one's judging me because no one gives a shit what I'm doing. Like it's, I can go have fun and I don't care if you don't like what I'm doing. Like it's, it, yep. you're skating for yourself again. I think yeah. some of it's like a, a pride thing we have, you know, where it's like, uh, yeah. meanwhile, nobody gives a shit and it's like, but exactly. I it's feel in your awkward. Head. I, I'm not doing what I used to be able to do or, you know, when it gets in your head and it's like, oh, this is, you know, all these kids now are so good and uh, I can't compete i can't do this you know uh two, 15 years ago i could have almost you know and once you get over it like i just want to skate and have fun and do that and then it's like oh this is cool and they, nobody cares and i don't care if they care you know yeah it's, uh, it's skating and it's yeah, my, to be fun yeah my level is my level and and i i'm i've been good with that for a long time but there there was that point skating is for a lot of I, I think for our era specifically, very serious, very serious companies, serious mm -hmm. videos, perp perfectly executed tricks. Don't do this trick. Don't film this. This has already been done. And that, and th and there's respect on that too. Like I think that those things are important to a degree, but it kind of makes you crazy because then it's really hard to enjoy things because you're 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 just only 
it's not like you're doing it for somebody else, but you kind of are, right? Because you're trying, I, I got to get this on film. I got to show people, I want to be a part of this. I want to, I don't want to let anybody down. I want to, I want to do this justice. And so that's a, that was a hard thing to a switch to turn off. So. I'm very guilty of that one. I remember like if we would make a shop video, you know, years ago we were doing it, but it was totally like trying to, I always thought of it as like, but there's people, you know, there's people in the group too that like you don't do that with either, but it was very like, I want to make this, it has to be filmed right. We have to have the right cameras. We got to have this right. You know, meanwhile, who's really watching this at the end of the day. Um, but I always wanted to like, Totally. You know, nitpick all we got. That's a crappy spot. I wish that guy didn't film that. And, you know, um, but I guess it, 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 with the shop videos, they wanted to sell them. So I guess that, you know, if you're selling something, maybe I don't know where I'm going with this. But yeah, I was pretty much on that mind frame at one point. Um, I'd say more recently, it's kind of like, a, hey, whatever, have fun, do what you got to do. Um, you know, I don't know where I went with that, but like, I, I get it. There's, That's okay. you know, yeah, it's yeah. It just there was a loss of like seriousness to it, where like it just became fun again. And I think everybody, once you get to a certain age, like you just you hit that that switch flips where you're like everything's cool. Like I can just go and do what I want, and it's that's all that matters. Yeah, like, I think as you get older and have more responsibilities, and like things change a little bit. Yeah. And you just, but it's I, I'm still, I'm, yeah, I'm still not going to do an Ollie backside big spin, but I'm going to have fun on my skateboard. <laughs> you don't want to do I, an Ollie backside I, big spin. Man, I, I just can't. There's like, that's, it's like, um, it's still in my programming. Like I still, I can't like, it's just the one of those things when I, I'm at the skate park and I see someone do it. I'm like, you could, you could probably pick another trick. You could probably do something else. So that's that's the skate park trick. The skate park Timmy trick is the Nolly Big Spin. They do a no- It's funny. Like I remember, yeah, like but that's a whole. I remember here there was kids doing like uh like when kids started getting good like early two thousands when it was like where did they, I guess the internet picked up and these kids had all these you know access to everything and they were just learning stuff and I remember like these kids would do like Nolly backside big spin down like a block three, you know, and I'm like, Oh, Nolly skate park down a block three. Like, but then, like you said, you could probably do 50 other tricks. Why that? You know, I think it's because it <laughs> yeah. spins a lot and it's like impressive. I don't know. Oh, uh, you know, I'm the notorious double flip hater. I hate any, anything that flips <laughs> twice is just it's disgusting. My name is Aaron Cairo. I'm a sponsored skateboarder from the San Francisco Bay Area, and I teach people how to skateboard. Today we're going to be learning the double flip. With that said, I think any there's people out there that can do these illegal tricks and make them look good, and I always think that's like pretty amazing. Um, yeah, it's a small portion, but, yeah, but somebody it is, but will do it. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, Tim O'Connor doing a double flip, like, it's not cool, but he made it look okay, like... He flipped yeah. super fast, you know, it's like, yeah. You're entitled to your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're like assholes, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, there's man. a, there's a local kid here. And he's great, but he loves double flipping his board. I swear because I talk shit to him, like just messing around, but I swear he does it more since I've started talking shit to him. Every time I look at his post, it's like, there's one in there somewhere. He's like, all right, I remember that old guy told me these aren't good. <laughs> I got 928 likes yeah. on this one. Ethan's out to show me. Yeah, man. So, all right. So, Dave, I guess uh, we'll get into a little more modern stuff here, too. So, you guys at the sure. shop just did the Venture collab. We did. Uh, look, he's got props. Yeah. Yeah, you got you got to have a prop. <laughs> and and you decided to uh, make me miserable, and you did not do them in lows. Um, we well, come on, man. Who I mean, who really? <laughs> yeah, who besides who really, you? Who really rides low trucks? Let's be real. I can find two people right now. <laughs> you and Mike McCarthy do not care. Oh, does he? Mike skate. He, he only rides. He's 10s riding right. your low still. Oh, he is. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Let's see. It, for, to talk to talk about the collab. I'll probably have to go back a ways with Deluxe. So um, I guess 
I've always been a fan of real pretty much since the brand started, um, had the, had the, uh, Thebo hanging Klansman had the Tommy Guerrero, San Francisco 49ers board. Um, also had the Salmon Aga, uh, slick bottom. That was the fairy board. I think he was dressed as a fairy and I had the, I think sluggos. I was it a bunny. Yeah, his was no. his, was, was his Jit- a bunny or was Thebo the bunny? I think Thebo's was the bunny, and then what was Sluggo's? I had I didn't have Thebo's, but I had I had the the Ga and the the Sluggo for some reason. So, mm. but anyways, I loved I loved real. I loved the first Spitfire ads, like um, Ground Round is one of the really cool ads to me. So I, you know, since since those brands started, I loved them, and I had the very first Thunder Trucks that had a lizard on one base plate and, and a, a dagger on the other. Yeah. There was one that had a skull as well. Yeah, there was, right? There was like a couple. And so, then I remember that though. So Mitch, do you remember? You don't remember those or did you ever hear about you, these? No. By the by the time I started skating, there was Sluggo was off. I think Sluggo was on World at that point. Like I was. Yep. But the old Thunders were cool because it was like random. You didn't know what you were going to get. I've seen pictures. I mean, I've seen them because like from like the collectors groups and stuff, like people have like full completes from like that era. Yeah. They'll have original thunders and things like that, but just that was it before my time. Yeah. So so yeah, I I love the brands. I I you know I always paid attention to everything that they did. Um, you know they, when they first started Anti Hero and then Crooked started Rasa Libre. Um, I when they got Venture from Street Corner. Um, mm-hmm. they had they had I I don't no they never had Lucky. That's right. Lucky was still Street Corner, but I I I definitely paid heavy attention to everything that they did. And so I started working at the shop and of course we always ordered deluxe products heavy. Um, but really I feel like when that connection started, my friend, Matt, he, uh, I met him through the slap message board. Um, he worked at the deluxe shop. And so we would talk about products and things like that. And I would talk to him about the wheels because I felt like at that point in time, Spitfire was having a, a very difficult time sourcing urethane or or formula that they skated well at first but they just didn't last and they 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 tended to flat spot pretty easily and he connected me with nate who worked that uh he was working for real and thunder and he still does um mm-hmm. and so he he set me up as a tester for the formula four wheel and so that was kind of like i created a lot of relationships through that um kind of tester role that I played uh, with Deluxe for a bit there. And so they would send me a wheel. I would ride it for a while, tell them what I thought, try to give really detailed feedback. And so that, you know, starting there, that I feel like that just created the the relationship. And then as time went on, you know, being a big uh, Mark Gonzalez, like a, a crooked collector, um, just a fan of the brand. And then I also, you know, venture trucks as a whole, the imagery and, and the logos and the ads are are maybe the coolest ads Mm. in history to me like the photos are amazing so um i wasn't always a venture guy though i definitely love product so i try everything and uh as as steve knows jake that works at the shop um he was diehard venture well he worked i should say worked uh he still helps us but he's not working in the shop uh currently but he was diehard venture and then Josh that worked at the shop for years, he was also diehard venture. So I would watch them and maybe it was just maybe the, the traditional venture guys like pretty tech. I think of like Euro tech, ledge tech, like lots of man tricks. And as Steve says, he's not wrong. A low truck with 50 millimeter wheels. Uh, that, that was the kind of archetype for a venture skater, but I still always love oh, the brand. Yeah. So, but, uh, uh, Essentially, I think we just always backed it as a store. And in the last few years, definitely like pre book oh. every single venture thing they made, all the sickest stuff. Um, we promoted it heavy on Instagram. And so um, my friend Damon that works at Deluxe, he's had many roles there. He reached out and was just like, man, we, we, you know, we really want to do something with you guys. What would you want to do? And so that's kind of how it started. So they're that's lucky so I cool. didn't work there because I would have said, well, you need the five, six low that does like this and then we'll talk. <laughs> I think that's so sick of me because um, I used to just everything like, is there ever going to be a five, six low, which I think would probably be a horrible truck because it would just wheel bite nonstop. Um, but they, they were like, no, <laughs> you know, or it was, I was, I'm still hoping. 
Ace made wide lows. I hope Venture can make them. I hope they hear this. Please, please make five sample sets and just sell them to me for an arm and a leg and uh, call it a day. I don't think it's going to happen, Steve. I'm it's sorry. not. It would it would be a horrible product. It would just wheel bite because the five two lows just wheel bite. Um, yeah, I think just stick with the smaller board size. I think that's, that's kind of that's where I'm at now. Finally, yeah, it's uh, yeah, man, ventures are cool. So what was so hold the truck up again because you have some cool little uh, homages on there. Yeah, you have so now you have the green good? bushings, right? Yep. Which is like, that was I'm a, I'm a, now that would, the inspiration for that would be the original Venture Feather Lights? Correct. That was mandatory. That was like, oh. um, bo both Jake, Jake and Josh and I all, that was like uh, something we loved. And I would buy, um, Deluxe would make a super cush bushing still. I, 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 they're not in stock currently, but they make a green one. And I skated that religiously for a while. They're a little harder. Uh, maybe a little too hard for me, but I would just still rock them because I thought the green bushings looked so cool. When Bobby's truck came out right after he had that Pulaski part a couple years, that's what like got me back into venture. And it was just yep. that raw truck with the green bushings. And that was yep. like, I was set. I was like, I have to ride those. And then I've been on ventures for the last four years, probably. I got screwed out of the green venture, the green bushings on the lows, I believe. Well, you do could that buy, to yourself. You could you, you you could buy the the loose trucks kit. That's what I got to yeah, do. Yeah, they're green. That's what I got to do, man. It's it's the coolest thing cuz that's what I remember when the Featherlight came out. And I remember it was a game changer. It actually changed the whole drillings on boards if I recall properly. Cuz this was no slide crooked grind time. So, Mitch, I don't know if you knew this either, but older boards they had the holes were further out. And the ventures, so that you didn't wear your nuts off, they put them oh. back, and it changed. So when I first started mind. skating, I skated indies, and they had the two holes in the front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that would like be stage first. sixes or whatever. Yep, that would be so you'd have like an older board, and then where the mm -hmm. new ones are, and they had to start. Yeah, so it was like right in that transitional era. Yeah, yeah. Which is Here's pretty a, insane that that truck changed the market. Here's a funny story too, like about that same time, I. I was riding independence and I would wear the, what would happen is, is my bolts were too long and you would no slide or tail slide and it would bend. And my dad saw that and he's a machinist and he was like, well, we could just drill your holes here. So that way you don't, it doesn't happen. And I was like, I wouldn't let him do it. Cause I was like, you're going to drill a hole in my truck. Like I can't do that. You know, like, but he was on it like mm -hmm. at the same time before they changed it. And then it was like, I remember going to the skate shop and I was like, Oh man, I have to get Ventures. Like that's the coolest truck. Like so, we all we all bought them and just switch, switched over immediately. It was just not even a thing. Everybody rode Ventures at that point. Yep, that was like the game changer. So, oh, yeah. so they were the first one to but, set it back further. Yeah, and it was a lower yeah. profile. It was a lower truck. Like it was just, it was completely different from everything else that was out. And it had the cool, like it still had pretty much. I mean, a little more primitive a design. It was more rounded out, like how they have the grooves. But yeah, it was, and this is like small wheels yeah. era. Yep. Okay. Yeah. There, there, there was a story recently on, it might've been on the nine club or maybe on another, I think maybe Clyde Singleton talked about it as well, but it was like, um, maybe it was Javante and Kel, like, maybe it was Kelch or maybe it was, um, like it was that crew and they were talking about how they drilled through their truck. Might've been Chris Markovich. But there was like a skater in that realm that like that was like, man, I'm just gonna do this. And then it was like they were at uh deluxe and then they're like, Oh, this is just how we're gonna do it. We're just gonna move these. And maybe it was um I always forget his name that worked for Venture. He um he he did think and venture, but he he talked about it. He was on uh, another podcast and talked about how they switched it and it literally the whole industry like Fosto saw it and they all just switched everything. So Greg Carroll. This happened overnight. It wasn't Greg Carroll. It was um. It was a guy that worked behind the scenes for Venture. I just I'm blanking on his name. I just can't think of it. So, um, and Keith maybe it was Keith Cochran. I okay. think he was. Uh, he, he worked. He worked for Venture. I don't. Anyways, but yeah. So the green bushings were a big inspiration, and then mm -hmm. um, you know, when they asked me, um, it's kind of a long convoluted story, but I'll try and shrink it down. Um, there was a young 
kid uh, named Jerome that he was a customer of mine um, way, way back when. Uh, and then he ended up uh, becoming a graphic designer and then he applied at Deluxe and they kind of hit me up and was like, hey, do you know this guy? And I was like, oh yeah, he's great. You should hire him. And so he got a job at Deluxe and then he would send me stuff that he had made. Like he'd, he'd made a couple different venture trucks that, um, that had come out. I think it was a Caleb Barnett truck. And then there was a Philadelphia 76ers truck. Uh, we have both of them on display, but he would do those. He was doing art primarily for venture. And um, so I was like, oh, Jerome has to do the graphic since he's from uh, from our area. And so he did the graph. The, the graphic is here. So essentially we had to change the color of the base plate. So the base plate was supposed to be the color of the shop building. This is a little darker than what we had imagined. And then, you know, you got the clouds and the rain. Um, it's just all basically based off of the colors of, around the shop. We have a really awesome view out the side of the shop, kind of overlooking the sound. Um, so a lot of that stuff is all just tied together. It's not like super deep. It's just like aesthetically, it's kind of like when you, when you come to the shop, you're just like, oh, wow, look at, look at the view. You know, it just, you can't not see mm -hmm. it. So. And how were the trucks received at the shop? Was that like, uh, people hyped on them? Oh yeah. I mean, I feel like. Um, the big thing was, was Josh, you know, that worked at the sh uh, shop for a long time and he did ride for, for Northern Co or get float boards for a bit. Um, he moved to San Francisco and he kind of is like a, a huge ambassador of venture and just kind of, you know, I, th I think a lot of people associate him with venture. And so for him to have some, some clips in the video, it really sparked everybody. So I, I think it's, I, I, it's funny. You want the five, six low. I didn't do the 6.1. And I really blew it because I feel like we could have sold a bunch of the eight, seven, five venture trucks. If I'd had that, I just, when you, I looked at what we sold and we didn't sell a ton, a, a ton of the eight, seven, five ventures. So, um, I kind of blew it. So I, 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 I wish I would have had those made, but they've done pretty well, even though they showed up in winter, what are you going to do? So. As I love them. I, I just think the color scheme and everything, it's, it's really cool. Um, so oh, I, I, I like so that. So was, were there any ideas that were pitched that didn't make it in, or basically it was yeah, like I've got it? a, I've got um a kind of a sheet of uh concepts, and but it, but it was like that one was everybody instantly was like this one, you know, it was kind of like like we we looked at doing the awake logo as well, and I think I have that stuff. I could I could definitely send it over to you so you could check it out, but um. We had, you know, a few different logo ideas, but we we all we liked the awake logo on the shirt better, but it didn't look as good on the truck as the circle mm. logo, that that classic heritage logo. But just the the color combo, the 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 clouds, it just it was like, oh, this is the one. It was just easy. Yeah. And you can do a little more with it. Yeah, it was it was just a fun process of just like it's cool. I mean, let's be honest, like Deluxe has the best art department, I think, in the sense of like it's the most scholastically like that they, they have their stuff dialed. Like it's like, oh, what do you want to do? Okay, here's here's how it's going to go. Boom. Not may, maybe not everybody's a fan of of whatever type of artwork for whatever brands, but like as far as like the machine, I don't I don't know if there's another distribution that has it like as dialed as they do. So it was it was really easy to to work with those guys, and it was just like, oh, what do you think? Do you like this color? Oh no, can we do this? Oh, let me find out. Oh yeah, we have to change this one just a little bit. You know, like the the factory doesn't have this uh this color yet, so or whatever. So yeah, I definitely dig how involved they are with the shops too. Like, there's been you know all, with all the different shops out here, like everybody's done a Spitfire collab at some point. You know, it's like they they and everyone is different. It's not just like a Oh yeah, here's your wheel with your logo here, and it's like everyone has their own individual design that goes like time goes into every single one. Yeah, and I don't I don't want to make it sound like I'm brown nosing or like I'm just some like part of the mob or something, you know? Because because there's a lot of other great companies out there and people that are doing good stuff, but if I'm being perfectly honest, it's like beyond if you look at like the companies, companies are doing collabs where it's like, Oh, we're going to do a Naruto pro collab. Every, everything is like licensing or something. And like, I feel mm -hmm. like everything, everything that they do has 
some kind of give back to the community, whether it's the community of skateboarding or whether it's something around there. So like they're, they're always looking for how, not how can we, what's the cash grab, but like, how can we do more? And I, I, I mean, that to me is just kind of a no brainer. It's like, cool. Like, of course I want to work with them. Of course I, I love them. So. Yeah. And they've been doing it for a long time. Like I remember back when they were trying to like raise money to, buy you know put give money to the city for to save love the first time around yeah and like they had us they had us wheel then that like a portion of the proceeds went to that fund and that was like early 2000s yeah so it's like way before it was like in fashion to do a collab with something or whatever like they were already doing it they're legit they've always been legit um even i don't want to say this to, to have any negativity but like they were a brand that was in Zoomies or is still in Zoomies. And it's like, it's overlooked. It's not even like anybody else said, oh, Deluxe sucks. They're in Zoomies, you know, like they do that because they have a great team and they got to get revenue coming in to pay for them, you know, yeah. but it's not looked at as like a, you know, like a stain on them. Like they've overcome that, which is, you know, it says a lot about them. I want to say uh, just, it's always been, you know, great products, great riders, you know, everything they put out is good. It's a, uh, they've always been awesome. You know, it's, uh, and it's insane that they're still around. Like they've been around how long then? Almost 30 years. Well, let's I see. More Deluxe than More than 30, probably like not even kidding. Yeah. Cause it, it, if you go back in time, Deluxe was very first started as a record label distributor and they distributed, uh, thunder trucks and, uh, Spitfire wheels. And you can buy a, punk album so so i believe jim and some other people before before he started his other record label i believe it was just deluxe distribution and when you looked at the list it would have all these bands and then say thunder trucks and spitfire wheels so it's been at least 88 87 wow Wow. so it's amazing you know and like they're still at the forefront they're still getting top riders they're still doing all this stuff the boards look cool the boards are dyed you know top two bottom ply they have a whole bunch yeah. of different concaves and everything. The trucks are all awesome. You know, they still... Yeah, they've gone through so many make, evolutions. Yeah, at least they still make, like, I, I make jokes, but they still make the 5-2 low. Like, it is still yeah. in some sort of a production. I'm sure they bomb on that truck every time, but they make it. Like, there is a truck I, I have to deal with. I can go get it. And, yeah. Like, yeah. Indy doesn't They make, make you low. a 50 millimeter wheel. Yeah, they still make all that stuff. You know, I can still get 50 millimeter Formula 4s. Like, that exists. Bones did away with 50s. Not I that saw I would 48s touch them, the other day. Yeah, yeah they, still make, they still make the little smoky. It's a 48 millimeter wheel. Wow. If somebody wants those trucks, you guys are the only ones that have them, right? Correct. Yeah, just, just us. They're available on our website at 35thav.com. And so there's a, the shirt, and then the trucks come in 5.2 high, 5.6 high, and 5.8 high. 5.8 is the magic size. Yes. That kind so of fits good. on every board. I know the sizing's weird on them. We make jokes. Dude, they, like, I ride them on an 8. You can ride them on, them on an 8 one. It's crazy. Yeah. It's, I remember having a... Because, yeah, the five sixes. I was like, these don't really... You know. Did you... Uh, Dave, this one, I don't know if I'm supposed to know about this, but I wonder if you've ever seen them. Did you see any of the weird <laughs> kingpin ones they were working on? With, like, I did. Inverted kingpin? Um, yeah, I definitely did see the the inverted Kingpins one. There was uh, there was Thunder and Venture both. They're trying to do an inverted an inverted Kingpin, and maybe what was it like pre COVID, like twenty nineteen? They were sending some samples to Josh and to other team riders to try, but I think it never made it to a full production. So it's like I I think that that the whole low Kingpin kind of died off i don't think the hype is there anymore i don't think people are searching it out like um uh i'm not saying that there is an interest but i don't know if it's enough to warrant um releasing a whole new truck yeah i remember seeing i was like oh that's kind of, you know just something interesting those things never they all seem to loosen up and i remember even like grind kings hearing about them i never owned a pair but uh like they would just loosen up and i heard that with the new crappy indies that they loosen up, you know. 
as a curb skater, I aspire to the down low kingpin because it's just less hang up, you know, if you're doing a like a board slide to hurricane or something. And so I would knock all my kingpins out and put in like a crux had a hollow down low kingpin that you could uh, fit really well. The thunder thunder had like a base plate made for uh, using a recessed kingpin, but it, it's kind of wobbles and it just, it just feels like crap. It just, mm-hmm. it's not a good, a good turn. So I just, I went back traditional kingpin. I just am over it. You grind them down or anything? Um, you know, I feel like I'm doing a lot less of that s- stuff now. Like I was doing a lot of customization last year and like I was riding some crazy boards and now I'm back to just riding an A5 and Venture 5.8s and like a 54 millimeter wheel and maybe I'll ride rails or not, but I, I just kind of just did away with all that stuff. I got a whole pile of boards to the left of me here that are just kind of, I haven't touched in a long time. And what kind of boards are you riding now, Dave? Um, I'm getting some boards from my friends, Stevie and Sasha and Russ over at transportation unit. And so those guys have been super cool to me and started sending me some stuff. So, um, that's been kind of nice. Weird and how to did be. that come about? Well, I've known Russ Pope for a long time. I met Russ in 2015, at agenda show. Um, he's good buddies with a bunch of people. I know with my friend, Steve, that he's worked for a bunch of skateboard companies. And then my friend, Sasha, that he he's doing a shop in West Seattle with some other guys called Buy and Buy, and then he's owned a couple companies like called uh, one called Amigos up here, and so um, I guess they're helping out Russ with transportation unit now, and um, they just reached out to me and just wanted me to they just like my skating, and it feels kind of crazy at forty nine to have someone want to give me some some boards, but it's kind of cool feeling. So I've just been been enjoying. Feeling like a kid a little bit, I guess. <laughs> that's awesome. And congratulations on it. I think that's so Thanks. amazing. Yeah, that's super really cool. cool. So, But yeah, I, I like the mold, the PS Sticks mold. Um, it's kind of a mellower kick. And it's not a super square board either. It's kind of, it's just a little more rounded, which I like. I don't like the super, the super square shapes. They're not for me. What width board are you riding now? I'm riding an 8.5. And I believe it's got a 14 and a quarter wheelbase. So it's, it's a... I believe the mold, it's not one of the steeper ones. The, the nose is, is kind of mellow, and the tail is definitely very mellow. Wow. And so uh, so they run different molds on their boards. You know what? I, I, I don't want to say anything negative about uh, Paul Schmidt, but I've definitely, I'll just say I've listened to a, a bunch of his podcasts, and he, he's talked at length about the different molds that they use. So I believe the one that they use is a mold that he said, Chris Markovich, I hate to bring his name up twice in a podcast, but here I said it twice, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, don't I say it a third de- time. Yeah. He designed it. Uh, that's what Paul said. And so they're still using that mold primarily, um, quite a bit. And so I think that's the same mold. Mitch, are you also not a um, Markovich fan? No, not really. Awesome. Yeah. He was I, always like the dude, he was really good skater, but just never, you'd, Never did it for me. I don't know. I I don't think I liked his stuff in Eastern Exposure. Like he had, I remember like him doing a no comply in Eastern Exposure uh, mm-hmm. Zero, maybe, and he did the Rick flip right after it, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I, first division. Yeah, yeah I just remember being like, oh, he did a he did a no comply, and it wasn't weird. Like you can do that. Like I, I, cause I felt like it, you, you had to leave those tricks in the past. You couldn't, you know, like if you did it, you were like, Oh, that guy's messing around or something. It wasn't like, uh, you could throw that out skating and not have someone snicker at you. So mm-hmm. my Markovich introduction is that 401 part where he's trying to get sponsored by Budweiser and he's like jet skiing and pulling <laughs> beers out of his, <laughs> like this you know, skating to the far side. I'm like this, who is this dude? <laughs> he's had a lot yeah. of sponsors. He's, I think that says a lot right there. Oh, yeah. Between him and Mike they, V of ruined companies. <laughs> Who has more? Who's had more companies? Uh, definitely Mike V. It's close. Who's who's had more companies or yeah, who's yeah, written yeah. for more companies? No, okay. well, I you know, I, I mean, still think Mike V would have him beat because of all the companies he owned that he rode for. I'm going to say Mike V has him beat, but yeah. Because Markovich kind of started late, right? He had, there was Crimson. 
Yep. There was what was the one given one something? Crimson, yeah. then given. And then there was something, there was something right blood. after that. Lifeblood or something. I don't, he had something. Yeah, Lifeblood uh, was right after no, that. No, no, Lifeblood is Bryce Knight's company. Oh, okay. So what he had something with blood. I think that was Crimson's their like their but thing was Crimson. like bleed skateboarding or something. And then then what? He just paints his own boards now. So Mike yeah, Lee's got I mean, <laughs> he definitely hasn't beat, but Markovich rode for Duff's twice. So there you go. <laughs> wow. That's something to hang your hat on there. Yeah. It sucks because well, Markovich is in that Art Bars Foundation video that I, for some reason, there's something about that video that I love. I, I love but Ethan I, Fowler. It's, his, it's a great video. John I'm West. Definitely. Yeah. Mike Rutzik. I liked him a lot. Yeah. What's the other guy? Um, he rode for Santa Cruz. And I, I don't know mm-hmm. why. He just was a big guy with good style. I just always liked him. So I think that's part of my, my personality is I like, I would, um, even when I first started, I would just pick out these obscure brands and skaters and just gravitate towards it. So it wouldn't even be a mainstream, uh, like Steve and I were talking about media skateboards. Uh, I think we all were talking mm-hmm. about it actually. But I, I would always just like, seed in a mag it's like what's this brand who's this skater you know so i feel like as the skate shop guy it really i was buying small brands from the beginning you know so it was like i remember searching out landscape boards before you could get it in the u.s so i mm-hmm. i always would gravitate towards those skaters and those smaller brands so did, did you because that's funny you said that because i remember chapman used to press them and uh mm-hmm. we have being on long island we had chapman was semi-local to us and uh, it was on long island as well and i remember like guys who worked there would come into the skate shop that i worked at and uh and they would come in and like have these like unabomber boards or you know and i'm just sitting there like what is that like oh it's a british company you know or heroin boards unabomber boards i remember seeing landscape boards and i was like what like that's so cool and uh like you know i remember what was the first one with the four portraits? Yep. I have that DVD yeah. still. And that video, I remember that was so sick. And I was like, oh my God, like Chapman might have these. That's so cool. I remember going there and they're like, yeah, we can't sell them to you. That's what they told me. We cannot sell it to you. Um, <laughs> and I was like, I, seriously, you can't just make one and sell it to me. And they're like, no. Here, Here's a funny story that it, it, it's in the same vein. So there was a distribution. I don't know if you remember this. It was called Overboard. And uh, my friend Kevin did it. Uh, he does look back library now, but um, mm-hmm. he he was a source, a huge source for me as a nerd of small brands where I could reach out to him and he would always have something obscure and he had landscape boards and I'll never forget this. I should have bought it from him. I didn't. He had a sample Bobby Puglio landscape board that never came out and he wow. was going to ride. He was going to ride for landscape. And so he had this board. I think he I think he met soy or someone at a trade show got the boards was going to sell them. And then between the time he got the boards from soy, Bobby was not going to ride for landscape. And so he had this one Bobby Puglio landscape board. And I don't know where it ended up, but I, I, I ended up getting a couple from him. I think I got a soy board that I held onto. And then um, a couple other boards that I probably put in the sale bin at my shop. Cause people are like, what the hell is this? I don't even know what landscape is, but uh, um, yeah, funny. I, what a relic that would have been to keep this one, one off board. Yeah, so. it, that would have been such a good fit for him. Yeah, I'd imagine uh, he's probably a pretty, pretty challenging person to to work with. That's what we've heard <laughs> again, episode two in a row. <laughs> we're talking yeah. about how Bob's difficult to deal with. Oh man, I got I got something to show you. Then can I can I reach over here and grab something really interesting? Yeah, I, it's Absolutely. within arm's length Please away. Do all right. So you remember Bobby was on the Nine Club. And then they were talking about his company and I, I heard you guys referencing his, his boards. Uh, so I, I bought a board and I got sent this shirt. And so I guess this shirt never, <laughs> never came. I guess it never came out. So, oh man, that's straight up like one of those <laughs> posters from the, um, yeah. Victim saves from church. hell. So I, yeah, I got, wow. I got it sent. I got it sent to me that it, it never came out. So that's another, uh, relic of my, my piles and piles and piles of skate shop. Uh, I, anything that comes in 
and I, you know, no one else that works there probably has cared. And I was like, Oh, I'm going to take this poster. Oh, I'm going to take this stack of blacklight, Jason Dill, Etney stickers that no one, uh, <laughs> no one wants. <laughs> yeah. So I have, a, I have a lot of stuff. Man. Yeah. I remember the one shop here got victim boards when they first came out and like, we hadn't even seen the graphics yet. And you're like, Oh yeah, Bob's got this company that's coming out. Like, so when they came in and we saw them, we we're like, Oh, this is interesting. Well, just just for just for fun, since we're talking about it, please be the box board. Yeah, the stupidest yes. board ever. This is amazing. It's <laughs> the guy who hates everything, and that's the graphic he picks. And there's wait, hold it up. Also, there's no. Oh. Do you have the magic marker written on the top with the size, or is it out of no, the plastic? I got a really nice note from oh. the guy that works there. So, Thanks, uh, Dave, for this taking one, this, this off of our sale rack. We appreciate it. <laughs> well, oh, it's funny. It's the, funny. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Mitch. Oh, I was just saying, because he had the other one that just said, what? It was like a blackboard that said future Bobby Pulio Pro model, but never actually had a graphic. I I bought a shirt off his site. Remember, he had like a blog spot. Mm -hmm. And I think it took, I think it was eight months I ordered it, and it took eight months to get to me. He probably skated all the way from Brooklyn. <laughs> he, a friend of mine, my friend Tomic, he ordered a a shirt off him, and he came home later that day from work, and the shirt was on his apartment doorstep. Like, just not even wrapped up, just like a white T-shirt on the doormat in his apartment. Oh, my like, God. Not on the inside, but on the outside with, like, a little letter, you know, like a little thing. And it was like, just hey, – I'm not paying to ship this. Yeah, but he was like, how the hell did he get in? He must have like waited till somebody came in and then went in and left it there. Like, it's kind of cool, yeah. but Dang. I don't know. Like, if somebody stepped on yeah, it. Can you or imagine it, coming home and Bob standing at your door? <laughs> There's some homeless guy here. Oh, man. I, I love Bob. Hat. I love Bobby, though. He's like, and you know, I mean, that's like, I feel like that, that kind of, I love East Coast skating. I always have. I'm not uh, ashamed to talk about that in, at the shop or with anybody that that's the skating I've connected with most in life. Um, and I, th I feel like Steve and I probably have always had that in common where we would talk about East coast skating, but I, um, I've tried to support him and I pretty, you know, I would emulate Rick and some of those skaters. Um, that was, that was what the only kind of skating that I, you know, I, I would watch videos and be like, this schoolyard looks so boring. Like, why are they skating this? blacktop bank against this beige building you know like i want to be in a city with manholes and traffic and you know things happening like that that was always what what which is funny because now i'm stuck at the skate park every day because that's all i got within proximity of my house but um yeah i just love east coast skating so anything bobby did or rick did i i would support it wholeheartedly that's that's what i love and it's funny because we had access to all that and like I was always like obsessed with world, which is a lot of that's LA schoolyards picnic. You know it is like, and uh, I used to like it when they skate the banks and stuff like that. Like that was always the coolest stuff to us. Like the tech dudes skating in the city. Quim was always awesome to watch because he was always in the cities and he was pretty tech at the time. Um, man, do you remember when he was like the best? Like Quim, I would say was like a top skater, at least in my eyes, he was. Yeah, I remember I like mean, he was the hot am. Like he was. What what year do you think that is, or what video was it that made you feel that way? Was it nonfiction? Yeah, he was and, pro, I was going to say he was pro by the time nonfiction came out, right? Was he pro then? Because I, I remember seeing him. Because I know there was like the, he had the four and one thing, and we would kind of. I remember never seeing him, but when the four and one part came out, and then it was like. Then I'd see him all of a sudden, like right after that, like, oh, I see this dude skating the city. This dude's amazing. I, you know. And uh, I, I remember always seeing him in the city, always happy. I, um, but yeah, I'm gonna say uh, nonfiction, right? Was that the first? Besides that, four and one was like the first thing he was really in. Yeah, I feel like that's the era. It's like, um, but the the four and one with his brother, uh, like that was to me, you know, like mm -hmm. I don't know, like just his his style, loose legs. He did maybe one of the best like Japan style grabs I've yeah. ever seen. Um, so I was I. I was a fan of, of his skating from the very beginning. So like, even, you know, when he was on Organica, I feel like some of that skating is kind of lost to time. You know, there's like mm -hmm. a, I remember I ripped a, 
I think he had a clip in a KO promo, like a like maybe like a minute of footage. And man, that do that clip, it's kind of like hard to come by, but so so many amazing tricks. Such was that in the Walker clip. Ryan uh Zach Lyons one? No, 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 no. This was before that. So KO it was the KO promo. We'll yeah, not it's up. official, right? There was like a separate like promo video before that. Is that the one Correct, with Britney yeah. Spears music in the expedition Correct. party? Okay. Yep. Yeah. So I, I do anyway. remember Anthony Korea's in that on Expedition. So weird. You know, it's funny, you 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 referenced Anthony Korea on with the the last one, talked about him, and I almost I almost texted you because I I recently got a, a VHS copy of mixtape. My friend uh, Mason gave it to me. And you know, I watched it on YouTube, but somehow I never really I never like could focus on it because the quality's so bad on YouTube. So watching it on my big TV, I was just like, that he had the best style. What an amazing skater. Someone mm-hmm. that I did I, I didn't really pay attention to. And then I was just like, everything he did just looks great. Yeah, he was uh he was always the one like I he was the one that like tried. Yeah, when uh I remember Papa Lardo telling me when Lakai started up. And I remember he didn't want to tell any of us either, you know, but he's like, all right, I'm going to tell you something like there's this new shoe company and he's trying to tell us, but, and he said, Wenning turned it down. And, uh, cause Wenning was like always scared of like, if it goes under, I'm not going to have a shoe sponsor. Even with Habitat, he had to sign a contract saying he would, he had them do a contract that Wenning could go back to workshop if Habitat bombed. Um, yeah. but he said, Anthony Korea was the first flow guy. And like, that's pretty insane. Like, especially back then, like that was like, like, yeah, look high now. I don't know. But look high back then was like, that was a big deal. Everybody had look highs. And like, yep. you're the only flow guy. Like, that dude was, he was good. I think it's just like some people too. They just don't know how to go about it or they don't care or get into other stuff. But uh, like, it's pretty yeah, wild. He just kind of lost that motivation. Yeah. I think I... he was trying to get on Baker or something at the time, too. Like, or he got into that whole. Remember Anthony was telling me something too, like, yeah, he's gonna he's blowing it. Like, well, I remember like, when traffic first started, uh this was this is a a funny story and it's related. So I remember like I was just new into like my role of being a buyer kind of maybe and like kind of like reaching out to people and I remember seeing like Ricky starting traffic. So I reached out, sent an email, sent it with the shop phone number and my cell phone number. This was on a Friday. And then I want to say on Monday, I was like at some outlet mall, my phone rings and it's Ricky. And I'd never <laughs> met or talked to someone that I, I looked up to so hard. And he talked to me for almost an hour and a half in the middle of the shopping plaza. And he told me about, he was talking about the brand or whatever. And I, and I want to say he was talking about anthony and that he was he was on but then he wasn't going to be on or something like that there was some kind of fallout i I can't remember maybe i'm mixing up two phone calls but i definitely talked to rick a bunch of times and he definitely told me a story about how he had to kick him off because he wasn't doing anything yeah and he wouldn't ride the boards yep he only wanted to ride like deluxe boards and they were somehow screening graphics for him yep too funny (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so, people are so interesting he yeah. had a little comeback maybe like three four years ago i don't know if you guys saw that on like instagram mm-hmm. like he was skating again and i remember my friend damon who does politic started giving him boards and uh he had to have the e-mold boards i remember the a3 e-mold and i was like damon that's what i ride like make extras of those but uh <laughs> he didn't like like something <laughs> south central as usual sent the wrong boards or something and he was over it and it was like that was the end of it oh, like it lasted like bad. a week but I was like, man, I almost want to, you know, he rode for a, a shop in Hawaii for a little bit for something. Huh. Um, oh, fuck. I, I, it's like the iconic shop in Hawaii. And they, I guess they did boards out of it, but he was like on that and had like tricks randomly in between this hiatus of him skating. There was like footage of him in a promo oh. for this thing. Huh. Yeah. I'm going to have to find that. But it was like, whoa, he still skates like he can still do it. Um, and even when he made his comeback, he could still do like Nolly, you know, Nolly Cab nose grind, like, you know, Nolly half cab nose grind 180 out. Like, and I was like, some people just don't lose it, you know? What other man. cool stuff you got there? You want to show us any more stuff? You got like tons of cool stuff. Oh, man. Anything cool. I got a lot of stuff. 
This just happens to be within my grasp. Cool. Mark Gonzalez book, Broken Poems. I think this is pretty hard to come by. This is That's one of the first things book. I bought when I started working. Yeah, it's pretty random. Um, it'll have like little illustrations. A lot of these are stories that, so Mark Gonzalez would have this um, in Thrasher. It was called Abnormal Communication. And so it would be, a lot of those are stories that they printed in Thrasher uh, called Abnormal Communication, just printed in book form. And who has better poetry, Mark Gonzalez or Mike Vallely? <laughs> it's a tie. <laughs> You really had to lean into the mic for that one. <laughs> I had to make sure everybody heard. So, I had no I, idea he did poetry. Yeah, it's pretty Mike silly. Vallely, man, he's like the uh, jack of. You have any good Mike Vallely stories? Did you? Did you? Uh, did you guys stock by the sword? No, we never. You couldn't sell it. I mean, his shoe did not sell well for us. I'm sure he killed. I'm sure he killed it with his Etni shoe, but we did not. Um, I, I I would order his black label boards. Um, I, I have to admit guilty as charged, like that era of black label was one of my favorites you had because Jason, my, my skating is somewhere between Jason Adams and Ricky Oyola, maybe a little bit of Pontus Al thrown in there. I feel like I try to like, that's my wheelhouse, but, um, Mike at that era, I, I, even if he would be kind of a blowhard or maybe just off putting, I was always like, damn, he is just being himself. Like he's, even if he's, even if it's all ego or even if it's all kind of like for show, it's like no one else is skating like that. And in a time when everybody was like, skating was like this big, like you have to do these tricks and you do them this way. And he was like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to do a tray flip mute grab if I want to. And it didn't mean you had to like it, but I was just like, damn, at least he's just being himself. Like I can't, and all I felt like I tried to do at that time was conform or to like, I wanted to be what was cool. Or I, I, I don't know if I really had a whole lot of um, influence, you know, per se, or like maybe I didn't have the best filter at that age. And, you know, like maybe two, 98 through 2005, I feel like starting at 35th gave me a filter. Um, being around those people that influenced the music I listened to, or maybe like the, the skateboarding I appreciated, or even the way I dressed, like the stuff that we would carry. So it's like, it gave me more of an identity or gave me more direction. Um, but yeah, I, do I have a good Mike V story? I never met him. You know what though? He did a demo at this indoor park called the skate barn of all places. I know got it. It's gotta be called the skate barn, right? If it's a big indoor skate park. Um, <laughs> But he tried this like fly onto the wall and jump back off like for 25 minutes and he broke multiple boards and borrowed like a friend of mine's board and then broke his board. And then like, I want to say he broke five or six boards and then he finally did it. And then I think he went to the van and got boards and gave everybody boards that he broke. And so my friend was pissed because I think he was riding, maybe he had a flip board and then he got some stinger tail Mike V black label yeah, board. And just... board <laughs> yeah. Dude, I broke your menace board here. Take this Mike V elephant shaped cruiser. Thanks dude. I'll oh, sign it but... 50 times for you too. <laughs> but yeah. I, I don't know. I, I have, if I have anything I want to talk about, I guess I've just been doing this so long. I don't, I can't, I can't imagine there's that many people that have done the thing that have done what I've done for as long as I've done it. You started to talk about that before we started recording. You talked about that slave board that you guys did yeah. as a shop collab. Sure. Is that, is that is Ben Horton did the art for it? Yeah, I have the... One second. So here... Oh, wow. I guess this, this isn't the artwork, but this is a print that he sent me. If you can see it, I'll try and hold it up well. And I have the yeah, artwork yeah. here somewhere as well, but I won't waste my time trying to find it. But... um. Yeah, that was a cool connection. So um, it's funny, we barely sold zero boards at that point, but we all loved Slave. You know, it was kind of new at that point. It was kind of, I don't know. I When Steve talks about his like love for uh, Menace and World, I was not in that camp at all. I was definitely uh, a hesh. I was a dagger. So like I loved Slave and their approach. You know, we have a lot of transition skate parks here. So I feel like it was just in 
you're around it so much you can't not skate it or not appreciate it when that's all you see around you there's no plazas um no good really good ledge spots or anything like that but yeah the the slave collab came about just through i think i saw a skate shop called home skate shop tom hornung i think runs that is that in kentucky and i saw yeah and so yeah. It's funny it's like another guy through slap that i i used to know um he he posted up and i was just like damn that's so cool like how do you do that and that might be the very first intro i had to reaching out to someone in the industry and trying to make something happen kind of like damn how do you do that how do how do you create that relationship how do you like because i didn't know him i never met ben horton you know i'd see so his art this, on ruka t-shirts yeah so is this like black box era slave or is this post yep. all that stuff oh wow no, this okay. was black box and so i think the rumor was that jamie thomas he liked slave more than zero like so i don't know if that's true but people were saying that he was riding slave boards and he kind of liked slave felt more like to him what zero was maybe and at that point zero had become like hot pink and like kind of like mall punk or whatever and slave was like mm -hmm. i don't know it kind of had like a harder feel to it but anyways um i just i don't even know if i was like necessarily a big fan of the brand i just liked his artwork and it seemed like oh man they they actually will do that they'll because you know no offense to like any of the brands that have done collabs for us and just slapped our logo on some crappy dripping creature logo board you know which that we we have that it's in the archive somewhere but um i felt like that was just everybody's default was like how do i just put your logo on this existing graphic and charge you a bunch of money to buy a hundred of them and he mm -hmm. actually designed the board much like the venture collab where it was like oh man like I'm looking at Washington, it rains a lot there. You know, the board says like, I uh, wonder what the weather will be like today. So it's, it's like, he really took the time. He, he traveled up here as well. So it's, he traveled up here with Isaac Randozzi. And that's when I met Isaac, actually, when he came to my shop with the slave team. So he was on tour with them. So I feel like that all kind of happened at the same time. So that's, that's cool. kind of how that connection happened. Very cool. So how many different collabs have you guys done? You've done a slave board. You did venture. Yeah, we did a thunder truck. Um, we did a Spitfire wheel. We did a creature board. We did. I've been approached for some other stuff. We did the the Northern Co board. We did two Northern Co boards. Isaac did the one that has the Tacoma, and which I I shouldn't call it. That's ours because that's Isaac's board. But we were wrapped up in the release of the board, and we ordered a ton of it. And then we did our Northern Co board, which was cool. We made a video for that um but yeah I, uh, man 21 years that's a lot i've done we've done a lot <laughs> i'm trying to trying to think of them all but that's really so. cool that you've you know done all of that because i remember working at a shop like we didn't even think that far ahead like there was nothing you know um well that was like ended in like 2001 or two i remember working at a shop but uh you know i wish i even understood these things were out there because it, it's really cool and it's awesome to have and the whole everybody in the community i'm sure is like really hyped to you know yeah i think it wasn't really a thing at that point because like i mean you know like i don't know dave probably knows but like i worked the shop i worked at was a shop that chris cole rode for when he first turned pro for zero so we were selling you know 100 coal boards a week sure but like there was no it was never even a thought to like oh let's do a zero you know g-spot something or whatever but then by the time like he opened rain with those dudes there was a zero rain board. There was a mystery rain board. There was a, you know, whatever they got going on. So I think it was just a matter of like timing and, you know, when that became more of a thing in fashion to do. Yeah. I think the brands didn't really look at it in the sense of like, look at this PO, I'm going to sell this shop mm -hmm. 250, 250 to 500 boards. I think to them, they're like, oh, it's kind of a lot of work for this one graphic. And it's only going to be like, they're thinking more of like broader, approach of like can we put this graphic in the whole line you know what i mean yeah. mm -hmm. and um i i think when we did that one with black box it, it kind of like i felt like everything shifted at that point not for just for us but industry wise where it would just became kind of more of the norm of like oh this is a good look this creates like a relationship with the brand in the region um these skaters associate this shop, you know, the shop is, is the focal point. It's the home of the, of the skaters. 
they back this brand just like venture you know we back venture really hard here's this truck damn I'm going to get some ventures, you know, like it definitely translates for sure. And it, it, it can like create that kind of response from skaters too. So that Mitch worked at the shop and uh, the Cobra, Chris Cole was like their main attraction, right? And Tom Asta, but Chris yeah. Cole, Tom. Um, so you have uh Simon Banneron, right? If I said yeah. that wrong. So is he like the big, was him going pro like, or were there even when uh welcome was original welcome when it was still cool? Um, yeah. Was that like a big thing too? Yeah. I guess I mean, who I've, were the big people from the area that when they went pro or like rode for these things that it picked up? Yeah. Simon's a big one. You know, it's, it's Banaro. Um, he's French. Um, he, he was, he was just always good. Like he was born good at skateboarding. I think that there's a whole era of Simon that a lot of people don't even know. Like, he he was doing incredibly technical tricks at a very young age and like gnarly stuff like he it just uh, you know he was in the region but again i'm going to reference that skate park the skate barn that was kind of like the very first it was a huge park it was like twenty thousand square feet thirty thousand square feet they had a vert ramp they had and even my one of my my uh, later team riders dylan clark he actually was riding for monarch but he's trying to figure things out too right, yeah. he was he was from the same era as skate bar and as simon and those kids all just skated there every day got super good they skate everything they skate handrails they could skate transition you know both dylan and simon can do 540s um kickflip indies on vert they can both tray flip nose manual nolly flip they can oh. they're just they're all terrain vehicles that's like um and i'm forgetting his name and i should know but that's like josh too right josh can skate vert right didn't he he lived at a ramp yeah he lived at he lived at the dope planet ramp but yeah it's and josh was a skate barn kid too he, he like had a little he had jake make a skate barn sticker for his water bottle because he wanted to keep he loved skate barn so much he wanted to keep it going so those kids that place meant a lot to all of them but they all became friends there and kind of got, got to know each other so it was very much like a, a community to those guys we had that but, same thing here but yes with, we had that the x park here where it was like tom and oh. shod and all those yep. guys all coming up in that same era it was crazy to see the progression like and when you're going there and seeing how good they're getting every day it's wild to see like how fast it happens. Yeah. But, but yeah, Simon, he, um, he would always come by shoes, but he had such a small foot. It was hard to, and Josh was the same way. Hard to get shoes for them. They're wearing like size five and size six. <laughs> so I'm like trying to get these Simon only skated the America Romero back then. It was kind of like a laced shoe. And so I would have to like hunt down these, these, absurd colors because that's all they would have left over in a five usually so i would just be like okay i need this shoe for simon like not really knowing how good he was and I, i'll never forget when uh, he came by and he's like oh look at this clip i got and he had, he did this tray flip off this like kind of like a it's like a cement block you would use for electrical like a uh, climb down so it was kind of this big bank and then kind of this this block and i was like holy cow dude that wasn't that was crazy and then about a week later josh comes in he's like you gotta watch this and he sent me he showed me all his footage that came out uh in a video later i think um it was a uh, kevin stakes video i can't remember what the name of it was but it was such a mind-blowing part that i watched it and i took the link and i sent it to my friend daniel that worked for lakai and girl and he instantly was like who is this kid i i need to I need to meet him and it was just like it was just that wow. undeniable like his his skill and that was it was a cool moment to just be like i didn't really do that much all i did was just be like dudes you here this is easy like this is a no-brainer mm -hmm. like he's this good and so like it was a it's i think it's in king of the road that year daniel he worked for he, daniel wheatley he was driving up and he's like you have to give me his phone number while he's driving up to like start king of the road and simon was simultaneously getting boards from toy machine and girl at the same time and then both teams were on king of the road and then simon was in the van with girl and then sinclair sees him and he's like simon what are you doing like and he's like uh nothing kind of kind of funny but um to see the success in the life that he's lived 
um, I don't know. I, I haven't done that. You know, I, I, I've worked at a skate shop and kind of budged my way through my life and made a lot of mistakes. And, but that's a pretty, like pretty big thing to feel like, man, I, I did that. Or I, I, not that I did it, but like, I'm, you were I'm involved here to do that. Like I got to help. I got to like, I get to do these things and connect people. And like that, when I, when I like kind of clued into that, I was just like, okay, this is what this is my life this is what i'm supposed to do and i just you know that's my motivation is to keep keep doing it to keep helping so and that's what like even when i did the brands or whatever when we were doing you know northern doa whatever but it was always like cool and you guys get a better offer you guys you know hopefully i put somebody in the right light and they you know do what you got to do like you know helping people out like this is cool but maybe you'll get on something else this could be you know so it's all I saw Ben has a zero ad. Yeah, only took five years. He didn't even know. So, <laughs> oh no way! Well, that yeah, he has yeah. a zero ad, two page. You know, um, but I remember that one was during COVID, and Ben called me up, and he was like, "Yeah, Jamie Thomas keeps hitting me up," and I was like, "Well, is that what you want to do?" And he's like, "I don't know," and I was like, "And I'm thinking in my head too, like, oh, zero, they have to be able to pay you something. Like, I'm only paying you royalties, you know, three, four times a year, on like 150 boards or something, like." And I was like, listen, I'm going to kick you off and you have to do it. I was like, dude, I don't even have boards now because South Central so far behind. Like, I can't even bribe you with boards. So if he can send you boards, go for it. And it just seemed like, yeah, it was like four years, three years he was on flow. And like, I remember he, he said something, you know, and I'm like, oh, so they flew you out to San Diego. And he's like, no, I had to drive out there. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there like... Man, I, I, even I, I when Zero I'm, was crushing it, they were, but they were so tight with like stuff like that. It's he's so probably funny. got a mansion, and you know, I remember I met Mitch. Has probably heard the story fifty times, but uh, it's probably like three years ago. The dude Slinky from Texas was up, um, and we were skating in the city, and we were by labor, and there was this one spot, and it's like a, it was like a planner that's like in the curb, so it's like a roll on grind spot or. Um, someone 360 flipped over the whole thing into the street. Um, but he wanted to skate up it and we're waiting and there's this kid who's dressed like Luigi from Mario brothers, trying like roll on 50, 50 body burial or something. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, we gotta, gotta wait for this kid to leave. He's like, I want to skate. So we're hanging out and it's me, him and one of his buddies from Texas and, uh, it's dude, Henry, nice dude. And all of a sudden this dude comes up on this cruiser and it's, jamie thomas and he starts going up to everybody hey I'm, nice to meet you i'm jamie nice to meet you i'm jamie and he's skating on his little cruiser that said misled youth written on the grip tape and he comes up to us and he goes up to them first because i'm trying to like hide i don't want to deal with the guy and uh i guess slinky had a doa board i had a doa board i think i had a doa shirt on and so he goes up he's like well, what's doa he goes to slinky you know and slinky's like oh it's his company and i was like oh. i heard him say it, you know and i'm like why would you do this so Jamie Thomas comes up to me. He's like, hey, man, Jamie, nice to meet you. And I shake his hand and I go, likewise. And he goes, what'd you say? And I'm like, uh, likewise. Like, yes, I'm pleasure to meet you too, dude. And he goes, oh, so what's this DOA? And I was like, oh, it's, you know, brand I do. And he's like, oh, you have any stickers? And I'm like, I actually do. So I pull out, I had these four stickers. And I'm like, you're like my age, kind of. You're going to get these. So I pull out the first one, it was this Bo Nose one. He's like, oh, that's Bo Nose. And I was like, good. And I pull out another one and he's like, dead on arrival four. He's like, I don't know what this is. And I was like, Police Academy four, like one of the first times I saw skating in a movie. And he was so, I think he was like upset he didn't get it. And he was like, oh, okay, whatever. And uh, I'm like, all right, cool. Here's the stickers, dude. And he's like, yeah, you guys have to come to Blades to see my video premiere. And I'm like, I don't know, dude, we're skating like. Blades is like the crap. It's done now, but yeah. it was like the boards and blades was the name of this. This is where Jamie Thomas, the great is having video premieres for whatever video it was and Rourke knives. And it's him like racing on horses. So there was like a dual premiere. It was like his Rourke knives camping video. And then, uh, the zero video that was coming out. And I remember, so I'm like, Oh, cool. But I was like, yeah, the zero video. Um, who's a dude gabbers, whatever yeah, Gabriel, Gabriel Summers. Summers Gabriel Summers yeah so he was in Texas and my friend Eric when he filmed or he told me he's like oh I filmed Jamie Th I filmed that dude's last trick and supposedly the story with this from what Eric told me was 
Jamie Thomas sent this dude to Texas to do this like super wavy triple kink rail, like bends around and he flew him out and he said, I won't fly you back until you land it. So the dude was out there for like a week. Um, and Eric filmed it. And I remember Eric asking me, he's like, well, I filmed a trick for zero. What do I do? And I'm like, well, Jamie Thomas must have money invoice him. I was like, start high and work your way down. I don't know what's like, if this is that good of a clip, like it's Jamie Thomas, he should be able to give you, you know, 200 bucks for it, hundred bucks for it. Um, so Eric, I guess invoiced him and Jamie Thomas didn't want to deal with him and took somebody else's angle or something. And uh, yeah. it's funny because he's like, I know that trick. I had, that was actually fourth trick to the end. Cause I was like, Oh, my friend filmed the ender. And he's like, that was fourth trick. And I didn't use his ankle. It was shit. His angle sucked. And I'm just sitting there like, <laughs> Oh, okay. And, uh, he's like, yeah, I use the other guy's angle. Um, you know, and I'm like, all right, cool, dude. Like, see you later. And, uh, it was just crazy how angry he got and he skated off yeah. and he tried to backside lip slide and messed up. And he was going around like shaking everybody else's hand and then he comes back over to us and he's like, you know, all right, man. So you guys are going to go to the premiere, right? I'll see you later. And we're like, we, he skates off. And this like graphic designer looking dude walks over and he's like, Oh, did you, was that Jason Dill? And we're like, yeah, dude, that was Jason Dill. <laughs> that was it. But, uh, so awkward. So then two, three weeks later, I get tagged like DOA gets tagged on Instagram and it's Jamie Thomas and he put the sticker on his board, but he made it like he wrote the DOA, like, you know, when you tag somebody and it was like, minuscule like he shrunk it down as much as he could and you could not see it and he had it on there and uh and it was funny because then ben ended up writing for it so it was like so he must have done research and then like oh this kid's good let me steal this kid who he would cry if anybody stole anybody from him that would be like the end of the world and i wish he would have just happened a bunch man weekend took a bunch of dudes for me um i just wish it would have been cool if like i was acknowledged as like because i'd say take them great I'll help you out. I'll, you know, but never got a notice like, Hey, we're really interested in this guy. Is that cool? Like, you know, and I would have said, sure. Even if I said no, they could still be like, all right, well, screw you. We're taking him anyway. That was Toby Bennett and this other dude, uh, Adler. I was giving boards to, and they took him. He was like, yeah, they're all for me boards. And I was like, all right, cool. Like they probably saw, you know, and, uh, that's too bad. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I'm happy for them. Like, but that kid Adler, like that was kind of, he just, didn't really do much anyway. So it wasn't like whatever Toby was really good. Um, but yeah, with Ben too. And I was like, yeah, that's how this is so random now that this dude's like looking at people and you put tagging my stickers and all of a sudden, like, you know, now Ben's getting hit up for zero. But, Dude, he was always on some weird, like alpha male bullshit. When like, yeah. even when he would come around to like film Chris and stuff, and, like you would have a conversation and it would be exactly what you said. Like, what'd you say? Like, dude, I'm not looking to pick a fight with you. I just made a comment. Like, yeah. it was always weird. Like, like I'm not yeah, trying. You, you can you can be the big dog. I don't give a shit. Like, I'm just here trying to skate and do whatever. Yeah. Like, I I did meet him when we had a we actually did have a fallen uh, collab shoe. And there's another. Collab oh, this is a, Do you still have one? Please tell me you have one. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, grab <man>. it. <laughs> this made my night. Oh man, did you, Mitch? Did you guys do any? Have any? Did Rain have a falling collab? No, uh, Chris had DC rain shoes. He was oh. on DC at that oh. point. That was like the tail end. Can you see that? Oh my God! Look at this. Wow. Says thirty. Oh man, what shoe is that? Um, this is Dave. Is, you're uh, lying. That's a stray shoe. <laughs> it pretty much is. It did not sell, even though it says 35th on it. How could it not sell? It's, well, it's falling. And here, we did it for both shops. So it says 35th North, 35th Ave. Oh. Oh, that's cool. So, so. did you skate those? Uh, no. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I never, I bought a pair to keep them. It, he was, I don't want to, I don't want to badmouth Jamie a bunch. No, no. But he, every interaction was just really tough. And I feel like that, you know, I, 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 as I watch every skate podcast, I listen to everything. I, I, I'm, I can't not listen to what's happening in skateboarding. But uh, I definitely, at that point, he was just really difficult. You know, 
Yeah, it's. I, I just think, and that's. I listen to his. I don't listen to a lot of the Nine Clubs, but I was on a trip to. Uh, my family was upstate, so we on vacation. So I went up to meet them, and it was like a four-hour car ride. So I was like, well, Jamie Thomas, this one's like five hours or something. So I listened to it and it was really interesting to like hear about how he was. And, you know, um, it's, it's all expected. Like, yes, these are the same personality traits he's had like his whole life. He was, you know, totally. and, uh, but yeah, just very stand up, man. It was like so weird. And it's I even heard like when he was redoing those boards, like somebody asking him like to look at the tops, like with the garage days crap. Mm -hmm. and like they were some of them were reprints like it wasn't you know like yeah. i could call south central up right now and have boards made and you know sell them he, he i just, don't know that's what somebody told me i don't know if that's true and it didn't happen to me firsthand but it was like yeah show me the top and it's like that board never came in that size you yeah. know like the orchestra be transfers being the top dude like the top dude and then all of a sudden like you're kind of not the top dude you know yeah which I think is like Vallely, especially having that non-humble approach, which is how you got to the top, you know, and then it's like kind of like, it's sad. Um, it, but, Dave, were you ever I, at Black Box? Did you ever no, go there? I, no, I never went to Black Box. Man, that place was a, a compound. It was massive. So like, I guess back when like Chad was like running everything there, they made, um, they sponsored this contest that we ran here. So they made these boards for us, these Philly Ann oh. boards. Wow. Dude, they sent cool. us 200 of them as just to like give away. Whoa. Um, and That's that was nuts. like their, their sponsorship for the year. So I held on to one, but like everybody in the area rode them forever because we had so many. Man. And Man. Uh, you better, better watch out with that, Mitch. Jamie's going to send an invoice. So years <laughs> later, I brought it to Jamie because he was at uh, Dogwood, I think, for one of those things. And I was like, oh, yeah, you guys made these for us. And he's like, we made how many? Like had no clue. And, like asking me like a million questions. I'm like, oh yeah. I'm like, this is like, I mean, it's 2009, so it's like when they were like killing it, killing it. But yeah, yeah, it's so funny that like, yeah, he there was so much going on like that that he just didn't even. Or that know was about. somebody like, I hate Jamie Thomas. He's an asshole. He cut my overtime. Like, screw it. Hey, Mitch, here's 200 boards. Have fun. <laughs> Dude, they got Come delivered on. on like this massive tractor trailer pallet. He, like, <laughs> he he had me. He had me like pose for these photos so i had to pose like i did not want a photo with jamie he's like hey we're gonna get a photo for our instagram it'll go crazy everybody will love it okay so i stood there with jamie and had him you know he took a picture it's fine i, I i'm not this i'm not a jamie um hater or anything you know i know no. i always liked what he did for i i think i think an important thing to remember when you hear me talk about skating is that I had no filter for a long time and I would just look at everything and I definitely had no like, um, it wasn't until much later when I probably had more of a taste for skating and kind of figured out what I liked. But for a long time, I was just like, oh, you like it. You have to like everything. It's all skating. These are all skate shoes. I like all the skate shoes, even though I wasn't fresh. I'm wearing a DC Lynx. I was a mess of a skater. I did not have any sense of style or understanding of, of a, approach. But anyways, so I always liked Jamie. I loved uh, Thrill of It All, and I loved Misled Youth. But um, he had me pose for these pictures. Both of I think are on either Instagram or Facebook. And there's one of him with me at the shop at the signing. And then the other one is of me at the skate park. And he's doing this boned out Ollie DeFakey as the sun setting. And he's like, no, I need you to stand right here. And I was like... Why do I need to be in this photo right now? This is so <laughs> uncom uncomfortable. So there's this epic photo of Jamie doing like a, a head high boned out Ollie. And I'm standing there just like sick. And this Thanks, is on Jamie. zero Instagram somewhere. Like if I magically it, went and searched. Yeah, it's on my Facebook too. I'm tagged in it if you feel out of Facebook. So I can. Uh, I don't. I can Mitch, do you have Facebook? I'll, you have to do some. I'll, sh I'll show it to you. I'll, I'll, anything yeah, you want. I'll anything you want. Right down. <laughs> Dave, you know what I want? I what? want, and I can't find it. And I know you have like the magazine. I need to get a picture of the "By the Sword" ad that oh says this gosh. brand will never go under. I'm doing it by the sword, and I need a from whatever interview he had when he said like "Thanks for nothing, iPath." Those are the two things I cannot find. So okay. if you ever get bored, you know what I'm talking about, right? I I do know what you're talking oh, about. The iPath one was great. Damn, was that Big Brother? Man, or Transworld. 
I think it was trans world because I don't think, I don't think he would run an ad in big brother. I think that he was too, he had too much of a yeah world hatred. Yeah, dude. I think, I think it was trans world cause trans world loved Mike. And so they would, he would, yeah, I think an outspoken Mike was probably like post big brother era. It goes back. Like he's entertaining and I hate to bring this back to him again, but it's like the dudes, regardless, there's entertainment there. You know, Agreed. like Jamie Thomas too. There's still this novelty value. There's something about him. He's still good. He still skates. You know, um, did. And he's still super good. Like you can't take the skating away from him. No. It's just all the other weird, yeah, extra Sometimes stuff like that it too. When these dudes are older and their skating's a little more human, and I really like it a lot more. Like Costin, I like. I've never liked Costin, and like Costin, if he puts stuff out now, I'm like, oh. This is so cool because it's a little like more relatable, I guess, but it's still really sick. Um, you know, like I don't care about him backside nose blunting, you know, 10 stair rails. I don't care. I, I think what's going to be missing from skateboarding or what I see changing is that we all, we have all these personalities that we grew up loving and people that we we got to know virtually in a way where it was very contained and controlled the kind of like what we saw of them. And so you have this like generation of like Costin and Jamie and Chris Cole and uh well I'll even throw like Rodney Mullen or these people they would have like maybe a day in a life or something and so you kind of felt like you knew them and I don't think skating has that quite as much anymore it's like but they're still there but now it's like YouTube influencer type personalities much like Gifted Hater or like some of these people that exist kind of on the peripheral of skating but like it's funny how these dudes were in video games and we loved them and idolized them and emulated them. And now there's this whole other sect of skating that seems like the kids are all paying attention to them. So it's just like a funny, like how it's flipped a little bit. So. Yeah. Cause well think of all the meat. There was like, you know, numerous magazines. We had four one one, like you had all this stuff to, there's none of that now, unless you go on Instagram as a search and everybody can just like, there used to be, set things where you could just you would know oh four and one came out new magazine came out like you knew to look for it it came out that's all you guys talked about you go to the shop shop was also you know and now it's there's a million things out there and uh but it was cool to have those outlets where like even four and ones and it was like a checkout and you'd learn about somebody maybe you didn't know about before or yeah. you know now it's like like you said it's influencers like there's no like a day in the life you're only going to get a day in the life aaron cairo you know like <laughs> Who wants to see that? <laughs> hey, you guys, uh, Harrod Barracks kid. You guys ride the same size board. But we do, and that's funny you know that. <laughs> I learned that last night. Um, so at my job, one of our accounts, this kid who worked wow. at one of these accounts, he came, he's like, oh, I, I used to skate. And he goes, I got back into it, but I broke my ankle recently. So I have this board you can have, and it's a 775 flip Tom Penny board. And uh, this is like maybe which, which, which graphic? It's really stupid. I could go get it quick. I'm gonna go get it. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where would you even get a flipboard? Well, if you're gonna have them, it'd be just Tom Penny's board. Like I can't imagine any other flipboard being purchased right now except Tom Penny's or Lance Mountains. That would be it. Yeah. I've definitely ordered a Tom Penny Magic Mushroom board in the last year for the shop. Because someone asked or just because you're like, oh, why not? I I can't help it. Look at it. your I, quiver of skinny what? boards. So yeah. Whoa. That, so this that is graphic like is real. So he gave me this, and I'm, I'm trying not to laugh at the dude when he's giving me this. Because I was like, so you're shiny. like 30 years old and you bought this, like... Because you're gonna love graphic. that. You're gonna love this board. I just because the graphic is so bad. Like you love sour boards. You're gonna love this Tom Penny board. Well, I can spray just paint, tell. Spray paint and stickers over this. Okay. But so he gives it to me, and I'm like, I'm kind of like, uh, yeah, thanks, dude. Like, what am I doing with this? You know, because I think I was riding. This is I wasn't even skating because that's like when I hurt my Achilles. So I wasn't even. I was like, cool. So I gave it. There's this ten year old kid, this kid Ashton in my town who skates, and uh, he's really good. Like ten years old, he's good at skating, um, but he rides 775, which is funny to me because I remember a kid that's 10 would be riding like a workshop mini or I don't think there's a lot of those anymore, like the mini boards. Um, so he rides 775, so I gave it to him. I was like, here, dude, here's a Christmas present. Take this board. And I started having like 
crazy board crisis recently because I can skate again. And I'm like, man, this is hard. It's been so long. I was like, well, I used to ride smaller boards. Let me go back to that. My venture lows won't hoverboard like, you know, win-win. And uh, so I, I called the kid's mom and I was like, hey, I gave Ashton that board. Um, is there any way I can get it back? I'll give him a Palace 775. Like, and she was like, oh, I'll ask him. And she was like, yeah, cool. So he ended up with a Palace board. I got a flip board back. And uh, yeah, I went over there yesterday and... Um, and she's like, it's funny because he's 10 and they went on vacation and they went to like the Braille warehouse or whatever. But it's funny because it's, it's like, his mom's like, you ride 775? She's like, that's what Aaron Cairo rides. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and I was like, well, I know this now. So I guess I'm in good company. You know, um, <laughs> Steve I, Barrett I, probably does too. It's probably like the Scientologist size. Here's my setup. It's a 7.75 Revive deck. I would have never had the to be to be as brave as you to call them back up and ask for your board back i would i i would be like just hey and i'm gonna get gone on the internet and this bought... board with weed on it <laughs> well I mean, it's funny well the kid rides he's 10 it's funny he rides for like this local company and i don't even want to say their name but it's like they did like a raw graphic you know and it's funny like oh. the kid's 10 and he's riding this raw like he slid it off like he's you know but it's just funny like i was like oh boy you know, but uh, so I, I came up what? with a couple gems recently because I'm having this board crisis. Dave, if I lived by you, I'd be your best customer. And especially now, no, no brand, Steve. So this is this gets better. You guys ready for this? <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. So it is that. Whoa, Boulevard. No, 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 Mitch. This isn't like a. This is a Danny Sarazini like syndrome rip off after the company's been dead. Oh, whoa. But, it's super flat. It's yeah. super mellow kicked. And uh, I saw it at the sale bin. It's 10 years Bunker. old. Yeah, it, it's COVID. And so were these. I loaded up on these too. Like, so this one's seven, eight, but it's pretty mellow too. Nice. And I was like, I was rummaging through the sale bin and they're like, are you serious? Like, I was like, yeah, man, these are all flat. <laughs> the like, time's that every tough. board in the store. And that's what I came up with. But I was like, while I'm doing it, I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that flipboard. And I'm like, does he mind? So <laughs> God, you know, I can't imagine. I feel like, like I would nitrogen. shatter a 775 in like a day. Oh. Yeah. It, it felt good. I tried the Palace board because they're all the same. And in my head, I can be like, oh, Palace is like an old world board. Like, cool. It's like having a Kareem Campbell board or something or a Shiloh board. But uh, the kicks are weird because they go like. 20 fingers of flat and then they just shoot up like crazy reminds Weird. me of like old chocolate boards i always hated them the kicks were too steep the concave was flat but the kicks were too steep but well here i am well i have i have one last story i could share i guess i don't want to keep you guys on here no, for forever do, but Dave. this is a current story so um it's referencing our we actually for the first time in i think so we're so what is that 77 so that's 40 I don't Six. know, 40, 46 years. So we got our I, first ad, first ad in Thrasher. So that was pretty cool. And I wow. completely man, I completely manifested it. So that was kind of a cool feeling, like much like we were talking about these collabs and kind of like orchestrating things where you're, you're kind of reaching, but you're like doing it tentatively. You know, at least that's how I do it. Maybe that's why things work out because I, I don't have that like super, ballsy brass kind of like expectation of where like i think that what we're doing is the best and that people should want to work with us i always have a lot of humility in kind of my approach and just basically like um i don't, I don't say i don't say i'm timid but i definitely um uh i take my time to make sure i don't want to overstep but uh one of my team riders dylan he's having some troubles as you know, Dwindle has been having troubles uh, paying their riders and he was having those troubles and so were his friends. And I think he was kind of a little lost on what to do. And um, it was kind of cool. Mike Burnett hit him up to do this Lunatic Fringe article through uh, a photographer that's local, um, Corey Greengage. And uh, it was kind of like, dang, they want me to shoot these photos. I got to do this. I got to get, he basically it happened to him while he was in the shop and he was like, I got to book a plane ticket. So he just booked a plane ticket down to LA to go shoot with Corey so he could get enough photos for this article that just came out this month. 
And so we were talking because he's he's getting some shoes from Converse. I think Lee Berman has been hooking him up, and um, he's kind of exploring some options, you know. And he had a, he had a great part in this local video just about to come out, and he left for the day. And I was like, man, how could I help this kid? Like, what can I do? What do I have within my realm? Like, how can I? Who could I talk to? And I just like I thought Thirty Fifth North had an ad in Thrasher uh, a couple months ago, and I was just like. Oh, I wonder if I could do that. Could we get an ad and then he could have the photo in the same issue? Like, is that even, am I just like bullshitting or is that even re realistic? Somehow I had Tony Vitello's phone number in my phone and I cold texted him, but it was like, I didn't really talk about any of that. I just said, oh man, I, hey, I was wondering, can I get your email address? I just kind of wondered how, how getting an ad in the mag worked and his response was, you know, basically like, yeah, you got to kind of order more stuff and be like more, you know, I order some Thrasher stuff, but probably not as much as some stores do. Um, but I felt kind of like, you know, when you, you kind of do something brash and you're just like, oh man, he thinks I'm the worst. So I was like, I better, fuck, I guess that's not going to work out. And then I kind of thought about it and I was like, I'm just going to email him and tell him like what I was thinking. So right. I just, I went ahead mm -hmm. and emailed him anyways and uh kind of told him what i was thinking and 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 was like hey man i get it i understand your perspective i understand how everything works um i didn't wasn't trying to trying to reach or think that we were even in the realm of deserving an ad or anything you know like uh, as always i approach everything with a lot of humility and uh i think i think it worked cuz i got a i got an email back and he was like hey i talked to burnett uh give me your ad in a week and I was just like, that, that's how it works. The world works that way. Like I, yeah. that's never, <laughs> that's never it happened. Went from like, you don't buy enough to tomorrow. Like what? Okay. Yeah. From but, being but, good. No, but how you went about it. Right. Yeah. It was more about helping him. It wasn't really like mm -hmm. getting the ad would be cool, but it was like, I just told him, I'm like, I think people would notice they're going to see his ad and they're going to see his lunatic fringe in the same issue. It's going to, it's going to put him, give him more visibility. That's all I wanted was just to help. Him. Right. So You're that's like, oh, I just saw his name here and now I'm seeing it back here. And yeah, hopefully, hopefully logically that makes sense. And I'm not reaching, you know, that some, some kid might notice both. So, but, it, and it also helped promote the, the local video, the Genesis three video. So that it was like a, it was just like hitting a couple birds with one stone, I guess. So that was, that was pretty cool. Not probably, I mean, it's one of the cooler things I've gotten to do, but I, I just never had something work out that easily before or not i shouldn't even say easily but like i thought of it and it happened usually when i think of it someone's like nah that's not how it works i feel like that's the default so so it's kind of cool yeah yeah and that's one to have in the collection that's one you know he gets to have that too that's like yeah an ed and thrasher that's pretty cool it's funny because i have this photo of him uh, we did a contest at this skate park uh, north of the shop in 2006, and he won the Groms division. And there's this photo of him. He's like maybe seven years old, and he's got his helmet on and his full pads, and he's got one of our shop boards holding up, and he's in the like little. I took a picture of all the the first, second, and third place, and there he is, first place with his 35th board. And I didn't even put two and two together that it was him until like two years ago. We're looking at the photo, and I, they're like that's Dylan. And I was like, no, it's not. And I look at him and I was like, Oh my God, that's Dylan. And then I showed him and he's like, yeah, I skated that board for like two years. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> it cracked me up. So hey, man, crazy. I just looked that ad is gnarly. Yeah. The, the footage is pretty crazy. It curves too. You can't really tell from the yeah. photo as much, but it, it curves a lot. He's a, Maybe he's a good on zero. <sighs> He has, if he's already used to not getting paid, then he can get on zero and it's like the same thing. No, I'm hoping he's going to ride for, it'd be cool if he rode for like something like limousine or something, but he's down in LA right now. I think he's going to, he's going to make something happen. Awesome. Hey. Yeah. Best of luck. Best of luck. Definitely. Is, Anything is there... else you want to touch on? Um, I guess that's about it. I probably just, I probably just give thanks to, to 35th for not going out of business for Kyle to let me keep doing this. Man. Uh, cause it's pretty crazy to think that he's done this shop since 77 and he still comes in and works a couple days a week and somehow he hasn't 
you know, I, I can be probably a pretty difficult person to spend day to day with. So somehow we're, we still function as a, a business and everybody still has fun. So it's a, it's, it feels good. So this is good luck. feel lucky. I get to get to still do what I love, like on a daily basis. And I don't know, it never gets, somehow it never gets old. I still get excited to open a, a box of boards when it shows up and I still like putting kids completes together. So I feel pretty lucky. What's your least favorite thing Ooh. at the shop? Mine, I'm just going to answer my own question, but mine was putting out like pads. I remember like if we got like a Protec order in and I was like, I have to bark, you know, do all the bar. I was like, oh my God, Protec, Man. like there's nothing fun about that. Dude, the dunk releases are pretty brutal. That's, that's pro <laughs> like, it's, it's a double-edged sword, right? Because it, it keeps the shop in business. It's, it's, it's like, uh, it's good money it's good marketing. Like people see those shoes. It, it brings followers to our Instagram account. People know about our store because of the shoes, but man, when you have this thing, everybody wants and not everybody can have it. And then it just gets weird. And people think you're trying to like play favorites or it's, it's tough. You know, it's like on one hand, like I wouldn't get rid of it, but on the other hand, it's, it's, it can be brutal. It's a long dude. I answered the phone maybe a hundred times uh each day over the last week just like the oh, same yeah. i can't imagine the, the same question over and over and over and over again so and, and i i i know they're just excited and i so i can't be mad and i just i make it my goal just to be like as kind as i can because i don't want to like be bitter but it, it it wears you out it was exhausting so i've been talking to a bunch of shops recently just from like doing pre-books for the brands that i work for and the shops that don't have Nike accounts that are just telling me like their phone rings all day long. And they're like, we don't even carry Nike. Like do a little bit of homework. For it, guys. <laughs> like, if you're going to blow the shop up, make sure they even sell that brand first. Exactly. Well, here's one. I was at a uh, bunger this weekend, picking out my sale boards and uh, they were, t they told me that somebody went in and from somebody from another local shop, I'm not going to name their name. Um, but they, they, the guy came in and he's like, so you have the Jordans? And they're like, no, that was a raffle. And oh, well, so-and-so at that shop said you have them. And he's, they're like, we, yeah, we had them, but it's a raffle. You can't just come in. No, he said you'd have them today. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was like, oh, my God. Like arguing with this person. This person's like, I just drove an hour. And I was like, well, I don't know what to tell you. There's no shoes here. Yeah. Some guy that doesn't work for us told you something. Yeah. 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 No, it gets, it gets pretty silly. Like there's definitely, I, I have a uh, way too many stories about that. I've had people try to fight me. I've seen guns flashed out from my store. I've seen someone get punched in the face. I've, it's gotten, it got, wow. that's what, that's why we had to just stop doing, you know, any kind of like announcement ahead of time, you know, allowing people to line up because it just every time it just it's it was drama so and i and i don't you know and and at the end of the day i just want like i want to be safe i want my employees to be safe i i don't want it's just a pair of shoes like i don't want a customer to have some kind of situation arise where it's like like we're we're going to be responsible you know if something happens like i don't want to be liable if someone gets stabbed or shot or something like that so yeah and I, yeah i, I for a pair of shoes, I don't want to live. Uh, I don't want to live knowing that I contributed to that. So it's like, um, yeah, I. No matter what you do, no one's happy. I mean, there's always someone that's going to be pissed. So you just can't, it's it's kind of it's it's a win lose. That's just how it goes. All right, awesome. Well, Dave, it was a pleasure to have you on. Thank you, and thanks, Mitch. So I guess yeah, this was really cool. Yeah, and Did everybody we... should go to thirty fifth Ave com and buy tons of stuff. And I will say this that the shipping from your shop to me in New York is like two days. Should we do a promo code for uh, dead air radio? If you would like to, that would be awesome. Let's do, let's do uh dead air 15 and I'll do 15% off. And it'll be, go. For, it'll be for two Mitch, weeks. We're, we're, we've hit it big time. We got our own discount code. <laughs> oh, look at that. Yeah. So you can go to 35thapp.com and it's dead air 15 and you'll get 15% off whatever you buy. Yeah, that That's counts awesome. for sale goods and full price. Even better. So you can find your uh, Boulevard uh, 
seven seven five Danny Sarazini boards on sale and get fifteen percent off. See, now I have to go buy that venture flat shirt. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. All right, Dave. This was cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, take All care. Right. Have Later. a good one.